Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to LCK 2019 Summer. It is potentially the final game of the night. A sandbox lead, KT Rolster, one game to zero. And uh, we're just looking forward to seeing what they're going to have in store next. The last pick, Morgana, was fantastic. Certainly an old favorite of Jokers, but that Aatrox, man, he popped off. That was definitely a scary Aatrox. It felt like it was full damage, and yet it was unkillable because had yep. that right amount of damage plus the tankiness between the adaptive helm and the Randuin's, uh, Randuin's Omen. Omen. Somehow they found a way for an Aatrox to be impervious to a Corky and Desire. Yep. Something you will see probably not again in summer seasons. That was a really nice, I know, everything coming together and with a black shield couldn't even stop him. So that yep. was a scary Aatrox. Somehow don't think the scary Aatrox will be the difference in game number two for KT. On that quest to find six match wins and get out of relegations, need to find a way to fight back in game number two. Yeah, KT have the opportunity of trying to take down Kingzone as well, but that will rely on Hanwha also losing both of their games. The game score really coming to bite KT Rolster, but now backs against the wall in this current series. We'll see what they're going to change up when it comes to the bands. The Tom Kench is going to remain the same, as is the Callista on the side of Sandbox. No last pick Kiana going to come out of BDD. Sandbox not wanting to deal with that potential curveball as the Yumi is going to show that there is no change on KT's side as far as the first two bands. A lot of focus being put on to Joker. Once again here, won't have the benefit of last pick on the blue side. Corky ban, this time coming the way of Sandbox. BDD's previously undefeated Corky. Yeah. Now a thing of legends, 2-1 and one, rather than the 2-0 it was before. See what the first big priority is here. Akali. From the sandbox. The Akali, I think, is a very easy call with the fact that Dove will default to it as well. They're going to choose to ban away the Ezreal. So now we have another note button champion in the bot lane taken away. So KT surely will want to find a way to play through bot lane if they're going to go this way. BDD obviously has a plan for this one. Otherwise, the Ezreal would not have been the ban here. Five seconds to go before the Akali is going to be locked away, and Summit decides that it is, in fact, that high priority. Could theoretically be flexed. Summit did play a lot of Akali when she was more viable on the top side, but we've seen her in mid way more often these days with the current iteration. Zyra Khan could come in here for Prey and Snowflower if they want to just lock that one away, but the Azir is going to be considered, and BDD is going to take it into the matchup. Of course, BDD just likes to take Azir into every matchup ever. And with the Corky side of the matchup taken away. And of course, a safe guess that likely to be Akali mid lane as the Akali top lane player has largely gone out the window recently. I think you're going to be pretty happy with at least the lane of priority there. Yep. For BDD in mid. No nerfs for the Azir on this patch. Here is a champion potentially rearing its ugly oh, head again. Me. They will pick up the Aatrox and they don't seem to be too concerned if something like a Camille or another lane buster is put into Kingen's hands. See whether they save Ghost's pick as well. We know that he's got a pretty flexible champion pool down there on the bottom side, so it might just be a jungler locked away here. In fact, everything is available. All jungle options possible mm. are there for on fleet. Xin Zhao is his uh, kind of calling card in oh. summer season so far. Just do it. First Here we round go. Draven. Wow. Yep. Uh, that's going to come in. Ghost just going to take away the forecast. Is Snowflower going to go back to one of his favorites here, potentially in the Nautilus, 15 seconds to go? And here's a spoiler. The Morgana ban comes out instantly if you're going to play Nautilus at this round. Oh, hell yeah. Now, what you you do lose something. So why Draven first round in the LCK? Remember, we see this in other regions, but not here. Think about what it does when you do this on the blue side. Because instantly, Katie's like, we need the right support. We need it now. We need to get some support bands in there and coverage for it. What doesn't happen now, Atlas, is that you don't actually get the, premi the creme de la creme of Aatrox counters. You can ban those both. So Sandbox find a way to pigeonhole KT into having to take first round support. Maybe they have all sorts of crazy support picks. They don't care about something like the Morgana, in this case, the Thresh taken away. And we saw this from SKT in the game one draft. I do like kind of bold decisions like this that pigeonhole the enemy team into certain options ASAP. Well, is Sejuani going to be banned here as uh, Sandbox not looking towards the Aatrox counters at the moment? And you can understand a Summit, the guy plays basically any matchup and doesn't really care. Well, that's pretty frankly. YOLO, but as you say, if in game number one you went the Storm, 
If you're willing to go into the storm again, why not? As there is the Morgana ban, like we mentioned. Yep. Feeling very pigeonholed is uh, KT having to follow exactly what Papa tells them to do. Tom Kench gone. The Braum's still up, I guess you go. But actually, Draven Braum's a bit poopy when it comes yeah, to kind of the Draven one. lanes. Some of them just don't. I think Caitlyn Braum's similarly poopy when it comes to kind of duo lanes. Cool. Very interesting to see where Ooh, Joker score. wants to go. This could be a fun one. Back to an old favorite. The Gragas is locked in. No real opportunity to go oh. to the Yasuo unless Kingen decides to play a top lane. Do you have to go Braum here anyway? This would definitely be the Joker pick, would be yeah. the Shen, but Draven Shen is very hodgepodge. Doesn't feel like a great lane. Because Nautilus ults and Shen's like, uh, I really hope I hit a two man taunt, otherwise, I didn't do very much. So let's wait and see what the support choice is here. There's not the clearest option. I think Braum, you kind of have to, you know? Like it can stop Feathers, it can stop Gragas ca Cask. It's not the best 2v2, but... Do we just lock in Karma support? You could do that as well. You no, I mean, again, it just get Wombo down. Nautilus kills you instead, yeah, right? True, I think yeah. it has to be Braum here. I think any other pick is actually a misdraft, unless it's something super creative that I didn't even anticipate. Well, four seconds to go, and it is going to be that Braum considered right now. And locked away. There is your sandbox team composition. Akali in the mid lane with the Aatrox on the top side of the map. The Draven Braum on the bottom side. And the Jarvan once again for On Fleek in the jungle. And then the Pick Your Poison world. Why not pick your poison that could attack the Aatrox, but also ult bot lane? Well, the only reason not to do that would be going heavily in the other direction. We've seen a lot of viable things flashed here. All of them with slightly different impacts on how the game goes. King in, if he was a confident boy, he might have certainly considered the Fiora that wins at all points, but I don't think KT plays around those side lanes well enough to go for something like Fiora, whose macro is very specific. They'll go the Camille, which means they don't have the GP ult to also throw into a Draven lane, because any help in shutting down the Draven, stopping that first cash in, is something KT desperately needs. And this is just such an explosive composition out of Sandbox. Very low range once again, but man, if they get that first kill rolling onto Ghost, they just plow right through KT rolls. And actually, what we can say about it is, this is the one of those times where you look at that, that actually really is a Sandbox drop, not just something that other teams would do. Like, I actually think Summit's probably the best Aatrox player we have. I think Dove looks best on Akali. And we've only got one Draven player in the LCK. No one else gets permission, only yep. Ghosts. So this is the sort of five champs together. You won't see another team in the LCK pilot. Maybe we can even anoint this draft if it goes on to be successful. This is definitely a draft the Sandbox knows in and out. It's been on the side of KT to try to find an answer. Yep, they have decent tools on the side of KT as well as having a lot of scaling options moving into the later stages of the game, but I think the late game is something that we may not necessarily have to talk about if Sandbox get their way. This is going to be the KT composition. Not talking about uh, scores, Gragas just shows how interesting the Sandbox draft was as our score hasn't quite found the same levels of success, but this is a champion that he's been known to pop off on. And if there's no Tom Kench, the cast could be very powerful in singling out that Draven. See what happens here as we get into game number two. Fans very loud here for KT on Liberation Day, hence the cool Korean flag that we have in the skybox. Zooming in, Dove is going to have the cool new skin on the Akali. We've had a different chroma for this almost every single time, it feels like. Different color hair from what I remember from the previous one. Yeah. It kind of looks like it's bugging out on our screens, but I'm not 100%. Might, might be just how incredibly crazy the skin is. It's very saturated on, yeah. on the hair colors. Thankfully, yeah. uh, Jonah Strong was probably listening to us, and he's going to get a bit of a zoom in here. Many under the sun, some it's yes. very pink. It is. This is an Akali that looks way more like Katarina than she should. <laughs> now, we're kind of in our 30s, you know, very early 30s, but still 30s. Mm -hmm. We kind of lived through the 90s where, like, the peroxide hair and, like, the... Yep, all the craziness. All the tips and stuff of your hair being mm -hmm. dyed 
were a thing. What are they called? Frosted tips or whatever. Yep. The old, uh, you are the old man. school Justin Timberlake look. Yeah. You were a man of much hair. I was. Yes. And you still are a man with plenty of hair. Have you ever gone through any crazy hair trends akin to Pink Carly? Um, I haven't had the like the hair colors. I did a bit of like dyeing it, but my my mom wouldn't actually let me. Aww. She wouldn't let me do the peroxide. It's like, it's what bad. did you want? It's and what was not for allowed? Your hair, Max. Uh. It's bad for your hair. You'll kill it. And you've got a beautiful head of hair. You do a very good Max's mom impression. It's it's not what she sounds like at all. But <laughs> I know it, I met her. But it is like a Kath and Kim style but remember, Australian mom. Oh, on decision. fleek is coming mid lane again. Remember his level two gank was no doubt a tilter last time. Yep, beat it. He's like, not again. Are you kidding me? And on fleek's gonna continue walking after him. He's gonna walk. Yep, he's gonna have to. Oh my goodness. You're gonna waste w some mana at least. Damn it. Yep. And I don't know whether... Does Azir want a skill E, level 2? I don't know whether he does. No. Yeah. So yep. now he has... Uh... Oh, wait. No, no, no. Never mind. He's going to be okay. Yeah, but he doesn't have Q, right? He'll be a more of a jerk. Yep. Okay. Dove going to be clearing out these minions as uh, BDD makes his way back into lane. Maybe missed a couple, but isn't going to be too bad off. But Dove having a slight experience advantage could actually be a big deal. I'm still thinking about the time I got to catch up with you and your mom and dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We went to a wine bar. We did, when uh, they made their first visit over to Korea. They seemed like very lovely people. I was trying to talk about how great a job their son was doing to <laughs> make your life choices yes. sound valid. That's I appreciate it. King's life was chained for a moment there, and I'm sure he's getting bad memories of the last Aatrox game he played against. Indeed. Score zero and three on Gragas this season. Just shows exactly how uh, KT have been feeling thus far. Really, it wasn't the part where they were summer champions last year, and now they might be in summer relegations playoffs. The back-to-back -back relegations. 2019, man. Yeah. That Brilliant. was the cost, KT fans. You really wanted that title. How you feeling about it now? Yep. From like. Oh man, I don't want to talk about it. No, it's actually really hard to talk it about. It makes me really sad. I was reminiscing about it recently. It was, uh, it was tricky. Yeah, I was. Uh, I was thinking about uh, Griffin and their run uh, throughout the regular season since their inception into the LCK, and the only reason why they haven't been first place every time uh, they've been in a regular season, and this is their third one. It's pretty impressive that they have the opportunity of potentially getting first place three times in a row. KT ruined it in uh, summer season of 2018 by being a head-to-head -head ahead of. Them. They were otherwise entirely even. They also entered multiple drafts with the running back things that didn't work. Yeah, I mean, look, we won't talk about Funnel Lucian, but uh, they found creative ways to lose very winnable games. The Funnel Lucian was against Jin Air, who was still pretty bad last year, not quite as bad as this year, but. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's uh, yes, but no. <laughs> that's kind of how I feel about that one. Now, it's just funny thinking about it in terms of the KT that we see on our screen right now who uh, managed to lose with Triple Infernal against this exact opposition. I need you to do me a favor, and it's quite a big one, and it's not actually completely your decision. Okay. But your dad has the best possible name to go with Anderson. Yeah, I know, Randall. I, uh, I feel like upset. your son needs to be Randall Jr. Oh, that's what I wanted to be. Yeah, that's, really? Dude, oh man, Randall's just such a cool name. I got so mad at my dad, I'm like, you had it. The opportunity was right there. I could have been R.J. Anderson. I would have been writing crime novels. <laughs> it would have been so good. But we would have been deprived from you on the uh, caster desk. Well, I got some spare time. I can just go home and jot down my crime Man, novel. R.J. Anderson is a crime so writer. So sick, right? Give me some titles for some R.J. Anderson like odysseys. What are some of his famous oh, series called? I don't know. Uh, the, nah. I, I, Come I on, can't. give me something. I'm M.J. Anderson. Whoa. I, I, I can't do it. It's MJ, so like, it sounds like you're pretty good at your chosen field. Yeah, I mean, I might be Spider-Man's girlfriend. Cool. Yeah. You could also cool. be a great basketball player. And pretty good at singing. Nice. Yeah, there we go. So what you're saying is you're going to absolutely hit the peak of whatever path you choose. Um, I guess, or I'm a jack-of-all-trades monster. No, I'm not nope. entirely sure Atlas for World Finals caster <laughs> this year. Let's go. All right. You heard it here first those who have the decision-making powers. <laughs> All I'll say is that Maxwell and Randall both cut from the same cloth. They're speaking of cutting from cloths. Yeah, Summit theor theoretically almost cut from the top lane, but is going to be okay. King in with a slight disadvantage as far as this lane phase is concerned. But yeah, you're right. I feel like they sound a little bit overly formal in some ways. Christopher's kind of getting there. Yeah, I feel like both of us need a little bit of... Uh, 
abbreviation. I've done recent research around this topic, not around uh -huh. the legends. I don't think about that at all. Yeah. Um, about naming conventions. You'd be surprised. I looked at 2019, kind of like what people are naming their uh -huh. babies, and Christopher or Chris is like 38 these days. All Whoa. the Christian like standbys of Michael and Paul and stuff like that are way lower. Yeah, I had like they would have been when we were born. Yeah, I was like I growing up with a million Matthews. Like every second dude was called Matthew in my primary school. Trends are changing. It's not yeah. quite Khaleesi, but you know, it's it's surprising. Yeah. How many people called like Apple and Pear and stuff like that? Brooklyn. There, the question. Whatever is David Beckham names his next next child. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Well, we're gonna have the engage on the BDD. Dove has found him. He's down to about half health. As you can see, Joker's trying to get them out of this pit. He does flash, does die. First blood goes over to BDD. As now Ghost is gonna have to flash to get himself out, and that is a lot to invest just to get themselves an ocean drink. Oh, way more than even at first sign because. Consider it's not just bot lane all had to flash, never mind. It's Draven Braum had to use all four summoners to get an ocean drink. So that means that Draven Braum can't be Draven Braum for five minutes because they don't have any summoners. Prey has a double summoner advantage over them, and that's with Nautilus ult coming up. So I think they basically suicided the bot lane 2v2 to get an ocean drink, which surely cannot be worth Atlas. Yep, and it was already difficult because they had too many uh, similar names in their abilities. Is uh, we're going to see this one once again, and Dove was trying to zone BDD out, but it didn't stop him from getting that first blood. That was interesting. Dove was occupying space, but he chose very early that there was no way they could win this fight. They're probably correct on that one. It's a pretty significant investment there, just to get an Ocean Drake on the side of Sandbox. Yeah not going to have any teleports here from the top side of the map as well, which is why you see Summit and Kingen, they were excluded from that particular battle and probably works out better for KT that that was in fact the case. Aatrox, a lot more of that team fighter, does find himself that cute little knockout on Kingen just there as they're trading skill shots. Conal skill shots, if you will. And Aatrox, I think, does actually trade very well against Camille at the very early levels. I think through level 9 is very, very comfortable and then Trinity Force onwards is really the inflection point on the side for the Camille. But otherwise, we're getting a bit of a slower game here. You get this wave stacked up though, Harper, and it might be that it's dive time onto Kingen. He does have the ultimate, which makes uh, Camille a little bit more difficult to lock down in an under turret scenario, but there's gonna be a lot of minions here. It, even if Jarvan just comes up just to steal away some plates, it is still going to be high value. We look for a little bit more poke damage. We do find it there as on fleek. Discovers that score is in the area. He's gonna go for a little bit of a back timing. Doing this to allow Summit to keep pushing up and be aggressive as we can tell. Yep. Very close to actually getting that extra shot. Decent stun, but King in unaware that Summit had moved out of turret lane. A predator pop out of that as well, so suddenly side lane's gonna be relieved of pressure for a good minute and a bit. Yep. Again, good news story. You can see King had decided to uh, step away from the Kleptomancy this time. Uh, wanted to at least show a little bit of respect to the MVP of game number one. Understandable. The reason for that is he wanted to play weak side. Uh, he wants to go for a little bit more laning investment. And Score wants to go bot side and kill Draven, right? You, yeah. can't, you can't focus top side and allow Draven to get rolling. So you change your summoner spell based on the type of game you're expecting. But that is also information to the enemy team of, wait, that's different to what he did last time. What could it mean? Well, it means that Draven and Braum are going to be under and tanking a lot of aggro. But crucially, Flash might be up before the next flare point in the 2v2, the Flash that was surrendered around the Ocean Drake. Yep. Do you know what else I want to point out is uh, Joker thought he was playing Yumi. He's got Ignite Exhaust. Well, I mean, to be fair, it's swap seats, Oh, right? right, okay, damn. I was wondering why the heck that was the case. And also, no, in, didn't actually in pro play, you don't go Ignite Exhaust on Yumi either. You go to heal, right? And maybe you do in a Draven. True, you can go heal just so the barrier is like double defensive summoners, right? Yeah. In case you guys are wondering, this is a Draven being Draven. He's all about himself. He talks about himself in the third person a lot. And he yeah. goes barrier because he doesn't care about his bomb at all. Nope. If Joker dies, then uh, there's no one else that's possibly there to steal his uh, adoration stacks away. I feel like it's lore appropriate. Yeah, I think so too. I like it. On brand. Nicely done, Ghost. As, uh, Joker comes on over, spots that there's a ward in the back of Shelly's pit. It is otherwise not going to remove it just yet. Joker is probably the guy that most consistently moves out of his lane, 
towards Shelly in this mid. He does it almost every single time. Hasn't been completely punished for it just yet. But uh, as soon as you start doing things that consistently, it might open up windows. It's that window of 10 to 14 minutes, right? Where everyone's thinking about Rift Herald and the potential for the two plates. Yep. Same as getting a kill worth of gold spread across multiple members. Usually, Dove staying within 10 CS, and these are Kali's. Yeah, what Blind is picked frequently tonight, and every single time, competitive at worst. Yep, BDD opting in for the Azir matchup rather than the Karmas that we've seen from our Faker twice in a row in our last series and things like that. Not sure which is exactly the worst matchup. You can imagine in the early game, Azir could be just as much of a headache as the Karma would be, as KT, with a lot of vision around this Dragon area, really want to be able to lock down this Mountain Drake opportunity. Potentially there, both teleports available from our top laners, flashes also up. And of course, there's been no... Okay, we're just switching over a summoner spell. Joker wants his flashback. Again, again. Going down relatively low. Darkened Blade going to help break through the Camille. Looking for a back timing by the looks of things. It's going to be a really fun game when we get to team fights. A lot more conditionals than some of our previous games when it comes to timings where a team is advantaged. I think KT, because they have Azir Zaya as two consistent backline damage dealers. Whirling Drake there. Falls yeah. nice and low. It resets for a second there. Yeah, and the Winter's Bite comes in as well, and KT decide that it's not worth it. The Dragon is going to be re released back into the pit. So, KT going to decide that they wasted enough time. Now looking for a back timing as Summit comes down, clears out vision around Shelly. And Sandbox find themselves with a lot of tempo. Just one ultimate, and the game switches. And it's scenarios like this that Sandbox do that kind of separate them from some of the other contending teams. Is they're very smart at using their resources to get something macro-wise, get trades up. That's why it was surprising to see the four flashes for an Ocean Drake. That was a bit against the grain from Sandbox. So we see the Predator pop. It might be a hard commit here. Yep, Dove is in a decent position to go for a flank. Teleport is going to come down right on top of this Dragon. And Score not going to be able to make it. Oh, he is! He's able to steal away the Dragon. But now Sandbox found position for this. Summit is going to be zoned away. Dove goes on down. Decent knock up, but no prey. Able to get the Feather Storm out. Non-Fleek going to go golden, but he's going to get given up. Two kills going over to KT. And these dragon fights have been all about this squad. The lust for Drake from Sandbox continues to lose them things. It was summoner spells the first time as Dove's going to be able to backflip away from King. And they probably lose the Rift Herald here too if KT just want to send everyone straight to it. After picking up first the Drake, then two kills, Sandbox overzealous around bot side objectives. And this time, well answered by KT. Yeah. BDD going to take a turret shot that he's otherwise going to pressure Dove out of this lane. Summit makes his way up top earlier, meaning that King is not able to get any different vision down as we're going to see this fight one more time. Score just wanders on over. He does. And, this and because Dove and Ghost are on different ebbs here, it's very tricky for them to have true threat, which is usually what the Draven and Akali do on different members. So Unfleek dives in and it's great CC, but unfortunately no one is even close to prospering from it. Joker goes down first, Unfleek will join him. Not really setting up scenarios for Dove and Ghost in particular to slam dunk down their opponents. And as the game goes on, at any point, Camille can just ult Draven and he's going to drop damage in one way or the other, right? Yeah. He's probably going to find it very tricky to punch through that. And then Zaya and Azia both represent consistent damage at backline carries rather than the burst damage that most mid laners deal. So you have to like most scenarios from KT's perspective, even if it's not one note, especially if Dove can do a number on Prey or BDD to open things up. Yep, or if Ghost is able to cash in. Currently 0, zero, zero which means he hasn't lost any of those adoration stacks, and that number is going to be getting pretty damn high. Hopefully the observers will give us a little inkling in the next couple of minutes to where this Draven is around. He's just such an investment system, you know? Like, I feel like it can skew the game so much when he does get that. I mean, he goes back and he gets himself, what, an Infinity Edge after he cashes in. And at that moment, he's just way stronger than Prey. At this point, they're both one completed item. As uh, now Summit's getting ganked. Score can get Infernal Chain, but straight up doesn't care about it as Summit's trying to find the options. Gets out of the way of the cask and continues to heal himself back up, but it's not going to be enough. He's on the wrong side of the map. And Score grabs that kill. Now Joker finds himself able to stand beside Ghost. 
and able to use the Relic Shield to get some health back there as well, back to 200 relatively easily. As that was so close to just the 2v2 kill going down in favor of KT bottom lane. And on the meanwhile, Onfleek wasn't actually able to find a lane to influence while they almost got 2v2 killed after the successful gank topside. So definitely a bad look for Sandbox. Feels like map control in multiple areas, disparate areas, top and bot lane is starting to go the way of KT. Didn't see how the trade started. Bot lane, the top lane gank, playing through the Camille when Hextech Ultimatum starting to be leveled up. Pretty straightforward and should only get better for the 1v1. Yep. But not able to get any inroads on the bottom side. This turret's still very, very healthy, despite that bottom lane focus that we have seen with those couple of drakes. Sandbox did manage to grab that first one. So when we're looking at elders and things like that, uh, it's not going to be exactly a runaway victory for KT. And the next dragon in a minute and a half will be the Infernal. As we have a look at this one more time, mid-tactical sweep, Kingan just says, it's r and time. Able to dodge away from an ultimate. The score is here we get the replay. It's just all about putting down wards here. And almost pays for it with his life. Just about gets away. Half an auto attack, it feels like, away from falling down there. So almost. I believe that... No, he didn't have Guardian. No, not that time, but almost yep. a one-two punch. I can understand why that was on your mind, given that very often we yeah, see... Yeah, and he, like, the as the auto Guardian. attack was, like, in the air, he made it closer to the Draven, so I thought maybe that would have played a part, but doesn't actually have that opportunity. Old lead in meaningful spots, even if it's only 700 gold. Between the two teams, no Rift Herald claimed this entire game, actually. 18 minutes in, looks like another fight might be provoked. Yep, score. Feeling frisky right now, as you can see. He's got a fair bit of damage availability. Slowed down by the Winter's Bite. They break the eye. They put it down to 1,000 health. Score unable to make his way into that pit. Dove off to the side. Ghost gets himself right in there. But KT just going to buy some time, allow Prey to be able to get solo local gold for this first turret going down bottom side. That is going to be the agreement between these two teams. Shelly in the hands of Sandbox. First turret goes over to Prey. Just posturing was... KT, they had no way to send Prey topside, so they did have to acquiesce and give up the Rift Herald. Doesn't mean they have to give up Infernal, but smashing down that Rift Herald might actually force KT to respond to a lane state, and that's what we're going to see here. Really smartly done. Jarvan says, all right, you're going to lose mid lane turret. You force onto this Drake. Timing-wise, we'll see if that's actually relevant. Yeah, well, they're going to lock down the Dragon, at least. The two best ones going over to KT. As now Joker finds himself once again extremely low. Dredge line goes wide. Shelly gets her charge, but no one's there. Of course, no plates available at 19 minutes into the game either, but just going to be able to get some turret damage. Evens things out here with KT, but otherwise, Shelly really not doing much, and Whirling Death having to be used in the mid lane really does demonstrate the sandbox mindset for this moment into the game. You can see, not exactly a gigantic gold lead. Summit is huge in comparison to King and close to a 40 CS lead, but still feeling like KT have all of their ducks in a row. 451 on the Adoration stack. This is definitely getting to Blue Blade's territory for the Draven, but yeah. if he does cash in, that's the gold lead gone, right? The gold lead will be basically zero yep. with a cash in here, so. It's all about Sandbox choosing their right moment. You never want to wait too long, but Draven alone could just, as, as you mentioned earlier, turn a pickaxe into an Infinity Edge and make this game a different proposition where only the right Camille ulti can shut him down. Yeah, it really does skew how these games go. Because if there's someone that can just stand there and three hit you, and uh, talking about how compositions function against one another is uh, not going to be as relevant. Now, parking their bottom lane mid, Clearing out minion after minion, not getting Ghost any closer to killing someone. Just gotta kill someone. We're waiting, Atlas. We're close to something big happening in this game. As Ray pokes his head over. Snowflower on his favorite champion. We haven't spoken about it too much, but the Nautilus has certainly been his default choice almost every single time. Sandbox knows they can group mid lane because they had pushed out bot lane and top lane at the same time, so there's always going to be a natural time where you look for a mid lane play and then send your Aatrox to answer the way bot side. But, of course, the reverse is true when the push comes in for Camille. Camille will be slower, pushing up the minions, no sign of a Tiamat just yet to give the Camille shove, so these are the sort of areas where Sandbox is able to find kind of incremental wins that very often with a strong shot call can allow them to cement their leads in the mid game. 
I saw some feedback on Reddit from some Sandbox fans talking about how Sandbox don't really have a calling card that we anoint from them as the area in yeah. which Sandbox win. And remember, they win a lot. They were in position to win spring season, regular season. In summer season, they could be overall our first seed. They're such a tricky team to evaluate. The real things we count on from this team a really smart mid to late game shot calling from ahead. If they're behind early game, they can be snowboard upon. That definitely happens in their losses. In this particular case, the game's in the balance. We'll wait to see if that sort of decisive shot calling that closes games for Sandbox can be engineered into the right picks here, especially around the Drave. Well, right now, Onflick is in position to potentially help Dove. He wants to heal back up again with that Hextech Gunblade as he is able to do it. Clears out the minions very nicely also as now Summit is fighting against King and Trinity Force completed. Oh, oh. World End a pop from huh. Summit just so he can get his health back and stay in the lane, I guess. That was peculiar. Don't really have too much insight to that. Could understand it as a reaction. But also, Neil, not, not, much of a, not much of a cooldown. Potentially just wanted to press it anyway. I don't know. It's already most of the way done. And by most, I mean, I call it a zoning. A zoning world end. Yeah. Zones the minions out of the way to avoid getting hey, the, the, the universe is bigger than just the All world. Right. They might have caught score here. He does immediately go golden as Snowflower waiting for his opportunity. He's waiting for Prey to get in, but goes, cashes in them damn blades. And that is just a free kill given over, donated, gigantic gold advantage now for the Draven. That's a 1,091 gold cash in, and the gold lead, which was a couple of thousand, is now three to 400. Yikes. That is a, uh, that's a big whoopsie. And what do we say about mid-game problem solving and getting something around the Draven? They found someone out of position, the Draven rocked up, and thank you very much. Suddenly, Draven's got exactly the items we alluded to. Exactly, and then more on top of it. He even got a cheeky Brawler's Glove. I thought you were calling Score a Moron. That wouldn't have been <laughs> nice, but we well, watch the play here, and Score walks up. He gets concussive blows on him, and then the Blue Blade's no longer. Oh, and no, Baron no, also no, helping. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> they they just seem like there. another moment there for the side of Sandbox. Yeah. Well, we'll see whether we're going to get... Hey, Marilla Nomicon looks like BDD is on his way to picking that one up as item number three. It's going to be a great game for it this time around. The score says thanks for the leash, buddy. Didn't have on the around for the smite. There's now KT posturing. Eight seconds, and that Mountain Drake has started. Are Sandbox going to leash it or actually take it this time around? And if this next team fight was a political platform between two opponents, I need to know what your priorities around stopping Draven are. What is your plan <laughs> to stop him? Yeah. How do you manage to do it? It's not enough to say we'll zone Draven. Yeah. They need to have a three-point, easy-to-execute plan here, KT, and it probably has to start with King and getting in there onto Draven. Yeah, as long as their, their stance isn't to just blame video games, okay? As long as it's not that, then I'm going to be okay. As they're just going to decide not to do okay. anything until now. On fleet, decided to go forward. KT opting out of any fight. King and off to the side as in he goes. Traps three into the Cataclysm. Whirling Death doing a lot of work there as well. Featherstorm doesn't get the Draven, which is the important part. On fleet makes his way out as King and has bound Dove off the back end, but he gets into his shroud and is waiting for a flash timing. Does have the ultimate. Is able to backflip to get himself out as well. And uh, they don't lose anyone, but damn, that was a dicey moment. And KT is going to get priority in the mid lane. Sandbox saw things that we didn't. They seemed to try to re-engage when a lot of summoners and ultimates were still available from the side of KT. And only by the skin of their teeth do they, do they not take heavy losses Yeah, on the side of Sandbox. Ghost was so often posturing to go in, but knows that everyone is saving their cooldowns to flash on top of him. So in the end, no real damage out of Draven. But to Sandbox's side, no real losses to Sandbox. But I don't know how much of that was wholly oh. in their control. They're running a Baron. I need to know what's happening there, but we'll look over the replay here. Picture yeah, picture in picture. picture. Sandbox are just doing the Baron. We're going to have a look at On Fleek deciding to use his buttons because he wants to. Score's going to make his way and should be able to make this one a 50-50. His Joker is once again very low. Dub off to the side, trying to zone B to D. Gets rid of the Braum very early. Sandbox committed to the Baron. Oh! They don't get it. Score! Gets in there with the steal. The Akali's dead and now Draven is trying to stay alive. The autos will get through, but they're not going to last as the dredge line locks him down. See you later, Sandbox. KT, get a Baron, get everything. The score will be remembered. Only one to go down from KT, but takes the Baron from it. Sandbox tries to just roll down the Baron and get back into the game. Felt almost like an emergency maneuver. 
It's not successful, and now KT have everything. Yep, they are going to be able to push through. This is at least a broken base. Speedity on the top side. He'll take that one as well. Decided to go for a reset before getting that inhibitor turret is KT. They know they want to put more items in their back pockets. Can't really blame them for it. As uh, that's going to be execution is calling completed for Prey as we have a look at this one once again. Watching the replay on this one. Let's watch how close the smite is, because Brom obviously knows very early it's not going to be close. 975 health, one smite comes in. The second one's even better. Yep. Early smite from Onflick, on point from score in this particular case. And I'm not entirely sure, but I have a feeling that the reason Sandbox were okay with doing that is they had the Brom who had the unsealed spellbook, but unfortunately he died before any smites could be utilized. So they might have been going for that double smite option as King gets knocked up by on fleek. He's uh, not as tanky as he thinks he is though, as King is just going to find a couple more auto attacks and beat it. He, in fact, just steals it away with the Conquering Sands. Takes a ride towards a kill and Sandbox have fallen apart in this game. Yeah, it's very, very strange. They seem entirely out of rhythm. EQ into a Camille with two items. Health bar disappears as an afterthought. Not going to be the massive stone plate because only one enemy around rather than the three you need to actually get those big health numbers. Another thing goes the way of KT. Look at this Baron buff power play. Over, already at 4,300 gold and likely to grow significantly. Yep. And it uh, looks like Sandbox are looking for even more plays as Dove is waiting off on the side for a potential flank. Summit underneath his turret, not going to be able to help out here as Dove is going to poke his head around. Now they've given it away, he's going to be able to throw down the Shroud. Shuriken backflip lands onto score, dives onto Prey, looking for more as there's the Feather Storm. Lots of damage when he brings the blades back. The flash on forward, it's Prey! He's able to answer and beat it, he doing so much consistent damage on the back line. Sandbox just throwing themselves at KT, and KT responding with a resounding thank you. Dove trying to do his best showmaker impression and assassinate the enemy AD carry. Turns out a zero does plenty of damage. King in two. The damage is too much, and that's all she wrote. Yep, that's going to be that. 28 minutes into this game, the minions will be followed forward. And at least if Sandbox decide to go down, they decide to go down on their own terms as the Nexus is obliterated. KT Rolster, answer back, and we got a tied series. Sandbox seemed impatient this game. They got that kill onto their Draven. We just assumed that that would be when Normalcy would return. But instead, they were able to be taken down a couple of times, tried to make the game quick around the Baron. And that was where Score slid in, potentially to the MVP, but certainly into making this game KT favored. The closeout was real from there. Through that Baron, they closed the game. And KT Rolster, who you remember, need to win to keep the pressure on Hanwha Life and their hopes of avoiding relegations alive. They get that win, and suddenly it's a best of one for all the marbles. Yep, and it looked like the sandbox composition of dreams for them as well. I mean, they get their Draven, super famous, the Akali, the coveted Akali. The Aatrox ran back once again for Summit, but unfortunately, after making about three or four pretty horrendous decisions in a row, they find themselves in a tied series scenario. And if Sandbox are going to make mistakes like that, SKT fans are going to be breathing a sigh of relief because that's not the controlled play that you saw executed by Darwin in our previous series and should be an opportunity for SKT to strike and get themselves guaranteed for playoffs. Pray for pray, pray for pray, pray for pray, says the sign on the left. The Bless RNGs, no doubt, are out there. Oh, yeah. KT Rolster being eliminated from the LCK is unfathomable, and yet we've had other big orgs like Jin Air perennially be down there in relegation. CJ Entis obviously relegated years yeah. ago. Lowell right. Park's first year has not been a kind one for KT Rolster in the slightest. And on Liberation Day, KT want to be liberated from relegations. And a win today would go a long way from keeping them away from there. Yep. A lot of Prey fans there and a lot of KT fans actually here at Lowell Park tonight. We Every are going time. the distance with this series, but uh, they're just waiting. They're waiting for something to celebrate. They had one recently. They were able to take down Jinnah. They were also able to take down Hanwha Life in 2-0 fashion, a team that probably needs a bit more respect. But uh, they're going to need to run this one back once again and hope for Sandbox to do this levels of pitiful damage. And remember, if Sandbox lose, the playoffs race also gets a little bit more tight because they were in position to guarantee themselves top three. 
There's still scenarios where things fall apart. Sandbox are not guaranteed for playoffs as of this game. Yep, we're going to have to have a look at those standings with even more scrutiny after this one. We have an opportunity to do so because there's a short break. Come back, though, the deciding game right after this.